Hello, welcome back. I'm in the province of Chia Nat. It's in central Thailand. And in today's video, I'm gonna to be touring all around this province. It is full of surprises. The reason why I'm whispering, you'll see at the end of the video, I've just climbed this mountain and there's a shrine and there's a monk in there and I'm gonna go meet him. And this is really amazing experience. And this province, I thought this province was gonna be like Nebraska in America, just flat and farming and nothing, but it's so good. You're gonna really love this video. So sit down and enjoy this tour of Chia Nat province. Let's go. Good as new. The thing that I like to do most when I get to a new town or a new province is try to get as high as possible. Get a viewpoint, get a lay of the land. Unfortunately, Chia Nat, just next to the town center is a hill and it has a temple on top. I can see a gold temple. Hopefully we don't have to trek all the way up. <laughs> Hopefully we can drive up there because we're lazy today, aren't we, Dreamy? So let's go up there, let's see if it's um, a good vantage point. And we'll make a plan to explore this province. going to learn that you can't park a motorbike on a slant. There's a crazy amount of butterflies here. Beautiful, massive wasps and bugs that will sting you to death. I think we're here. This place is completely deserted. I've never actually seen a temple in this sort of disrepair and it being so new. So let me explain. So the one thing that you, is kind of a constant in Thailand is when you come to these temples that are, you know, relatively new, you know, this is definitely less than 50 years old. There's always a few monks, some staff, um, people basically constantly living up here taking care of the place you always see them brushing the leaves cleaning and polishing the Buddha statues and maintaining it and there's always donation boxes and that's how you, you know the staff are paid and how the monks are fed basically and um, they maintain a beautiful tranquil spot up here on the hill and at some point this place must have been super tranquil and super beautiful you can see that they've set it up with gongs and bells for tourists and Thai people to come up here and pray and make a wish and admire the view. However, everything is in disrepair, including leaves everywhere, and no one's brushing the leaves. There's quite a bit of trash as well. 
eerily there's lots of raisins raisins ravens <laughs> that would be funny eerie raisins eerie ravens flying around and cawing and making it all feel like resident evil vibe and the viewpoints itself i've walked around and i've basically figured out that the, the two or three parts that they've set up set up for the view um I've overgrown with bushes, trees and things, and you can see that they haven't been maintained or trimmed back for quite a long time. I think this place was abandoned for some reason, maybe COVID, maybe not. Even the temple is closed and the doors are locked and there's iron gates and things. So you can't even go in and people look inside the temple. And so that's the first for me to come to a relatively new built, a newly built temple and to see it basically forgotten about. L luckily they didn't lock it you can still walk up here and drive up here. So I flew the drone, I, I can get bits and pieces of the view but not 360 unfortunately and I can see that there's there's even more temples around and dotted on little hills. There's a lot of rice paddy fields. This is the basin of the Chai Prayao River and so you know this is a really important area for growing rice, sugarcane and many different crops and you can see it in every direction and I saw this driving yesterday when i drove all the way up from the south i just drove through farmlands and it was beautiful so maybe we'll go take a closer look at the rice paddies we'll go look for some more temples we'll just drive around and then in the evening the town itself is based on the the, the river um chai prayao chow prayao the, the river that goes to bangkok i should say i'm not sure how to pronounce it just yet and i did see a really big engineering project in the distance it looks like a huge dam so let's go check out the dam let's just explore and have some fun in this um hopefully not completely deserted province <laughs> Right at the base of the mountain, or the hill, I should say, with that temple is another beautiful Buddha statue, as you can see here. And um, it's funny, isn't it? Because literally, this is 500 meters away from the, the, the road to get up to the hill temple. And, um, you know, there's guys behind me here working on it. There's loads of bricks and mortar here. It looks like they're, you know, building a brand new temple structure. So I'm not going to go up there because I think it's a bit of a building site, but the Buddha itself, I have to say the Buddha is beautiful. It's a really nice image of the Buddha, really well structured. And sometimes you see these like statues of Buddha and they're a little bit wonky and the nose looks a bit weird. A bit of a Michael Jackson vibe going. But this one is perfect. I think it looks very nice. And then you've got the seven headed serpent on each side of the staircase, which is actually, I learned this recently, that's a symbol from Hinduism, like most of Buddhism comes from Hinduism in India, obviously. Um, but the Thai sect of Buddhism adopted it into their own folk tales. And so he kind of stands guard. Um, you see it in almost every temple, but this one's particularly beautiful, a huge like cobra fan coming out. With these seven heads and the kings on king crowns on top and um you can see the guys working they're doing the welding so i'm not going to disturb them but um it's funny that they're building this when really they should go up there and you know fix the old one lovely lovely temple or not quite finished yet but it will be lovely right then let's go find this dam Holy crap, sorry for my language. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. If you know me, then you know I'm absolutely mad for huge engineering projects. Anything that is just, you know, just on par with nature, but man-made, I'm in love with. Listen to that. Whoa, look at the water. That is incredible. That is unbelievable. So basically what's going on, what I can figure out is this is Thailand's first real dam. Look at this. 
But this is the Cha Payao River, guys. This is the river that goes all the way to Bangkok. And this is unbelievable. There are these huge orange doors underneath the bridge, which are pushing back the water and holding back all this vegeta vegetation. They even have diggers and machinery in the distance scooping up all that vegetation, all that plant life that's built up and grown here, maybe during the rainy season. And now it's time to clear it. And they're letting the water through in a way of controlling the, the supply to the rice fields and the valleys below and into Bangkok down river. Wow. I'm not sure if this is a hydro power or not. I think this might just be a, a control mechanism to keep the floodplains from flooding. But wow, what an amazing dam. What an amazing dam. Look at it. Wow. Stumbled into a Japanese restaurant. <laughs> I was just driving back from the dam, country road alongside the river, nobody around whatsoever. And I just saw like a trendy looking place on the side, so I parked up. And when I walked in, there was like 30 women working here in the kitchen, waiting staff, they were having a pre, you know, service meeting. And then, you know, the tables and chairs are outside. They have an indoor area as well, but it's right on the river. And you can see all of that vegetation that's blocked up at the uh, dam, drifting down the river. And um, I was the only person here, but it's just gone 11 o'clock and there's already six tables. So I think they're about to get slammed because it's Sunday. Yeah, it's Sunday, isn't it? So busy service and it's really good food. I mean, I mean, look, I've got this um, nice spread here and I've got some, this, what's the name of this in Japanese? I can't remember, but it's basically like, you know, smoked mackerel, um, really fishy, smoky fish on some rice and then some salmon sushi rolls and some nice pickled ginger and some sides <laughs> this is like proper fancy I mean let me try I wasn't expecting this you know in the middle of the countryside because when you're driving around in this area you know it's not like you're driving around a fancy part of Bangkok or Chiang Mai this is not Niman <laughs> this is the countryside they just put some nice tunes on mmm it's fantastic absolutely fantastic and then I love this in Japanese restaurants the pickled ginger oh my god it's to die for I've got a feeling that these central provinces the the lowlands the valleys with the rice fields are gonna be full of surprises even though I was expecting them to be kind of kind of flat Mwah. to Wat Tamamun Wariwan, Wariwihan. <laughs> That's a hard one. They need to come up with some creative names, you know, like we got, we'll call this one Staircase Temple. It's late afternoon and I thought, you know, let's, let's go get our workout for the day. We're not gonna go for a run. We're gonna walk up 500 steps, white steps, up a steep incline. It's beautiful here, right? So let's go up and um, get our workout for the day and hopefully a beautiful view at the top. Now the only thing I am confused about is do I go 
this way where there's nobody or do I is do I have to go to the left maybe we have to go to the left everything is in Thai by the way every single person I talk to in this province does not speak a word of English they just talk at me in Thai and I say okay okay it's not that way it's this way The trick is to not look at the view, save it till the top. Oh, that's what I saw. So I saw these like huts, wooden huts, the little rest points. So look, there's already a rest after like 50 steps. Some people are lazy. I need a rest. What are you talking about, Nan? We've got 20 more sections to go you go on without me and carry me with you let's go I just had a look at that time-lapse shot on the GoPro. Four minutes and six seconds. And I started it at like the second phase, so not far into it. It wasn't that bad. 500 steps. Probably takes you five minutes if you just go non-stop. But that's not the top. And we're now in kind of like a jungle forest stage. Nice, you know, nature trail. And they have all of these, um, what do you, I don't even know what they're called, but I saw these at Moonstone. People lay them for good luck. Actually, I don't know why they lay them. Is it just for fun? Or is it a ghost? So anyway, quite pleasant. And we'll just hope this doesn't go on for two hours and it's not too far away. Actually, I don't mind. I'd love a two hour trek right now. Oh my god, hey guys, welcome to my jungle trek vlog. I'm just in the jungle trekking. It's super wilderness, super alone, super scary, super mind-blowing. You know, I've been on the bike all day and then nipped home for a couple of hours. I never really filmed during the day. It's one thing I learned on the first part of this trip is don't film all day. Film in the morning when it's not hot. Come back during the hottest part of the day. Chill out and then go back out in the afternoon. Saves me from like burning out. Oh my gosh, guys, welcome to the jungle. I'm just doing a jungle trek. It's so green AF, spiritual AF. I'm just having the best time. You should totally follow me on TikTok. Anyway, <laughs> let's just enjoy this. And you know, I don't know the significance. Maybe 
you go in and you ask him for a number and you pray and he'll give you a lucky number and then you go downstairs. I don't know. Um, what do I do? Because he's chanting. To, I don't want to go in and disturb him. I don't, I'm just going to wait a little bit and see what happens. I'm going to put my face mask on in case he's worried that I've got COVID. And then, I don't know. <laughs> this is a unique experience. Is it just in there? <laughs> Super cool. Just leaving now. I actually had about a five minute chat with him. He was really nice. I could see that he wanted to get on with his chanting and praying, but um, he was really polite. He speaks really good English. And so he told me that that temple was built 1400 years ago and uh, he doesn't live up here. I asked him if he lives up here. He says he goes down every night and he comes up every morning. And that area that we saw is where he sleeps in sort of like December, January time when there's no rain and it's nice and cool and it's better than having uh, aircon apparently. And um, so he sleeps up here and um, takes care of the place. And uh, yeah, so that you don't get a lucky number from him. He says that's to do with downstairs. So I don't know anything about that. So I thought, I thought it'd be really cool if he gave me a number. Like your lucky number is four. And I'd be like, oh, but no. Um, I did start to get eaten alive by mosquitoes. So we had a quick chat and then he was like, I'm gonna get back to my thing. And I was like, I'm gonna get back to my thing. See you later. And he was really nice because I, I said, I'm sorry, I don't have trousers on. Cause you're supposed to be covered up when you go inside a temple. Um, I wasn't gonna go into the temple if there was a temple up here, but he, he wanted me to take a look. He was like, come in, have a look. And I said, are you sure? And he, he was fine about it. And I was like, okay, fine. If the monk tells you it's fine, it's gotta be fine, right? Um, what an amazing experience to have a chat with a monk in a shrine on top of a mountain in the middle of central Thailand. He spoke English and um, he asked me about my camera. He said, oh, do you do, do, you do YouTube? And I said, yes. And uh, he said, um, you know, is that your job? And I said, yes. And he said, splendid. <laughs> so it was a very funny word to choose. Splendid. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, enjoy the sunset here I'm just at one of those uh, rest spots with the bell on the way down but it's quite it's high up it's an incredible view and there's no point in me rushing back to town I might as well just stay up here feel the breeze watch this incredible sunset I'll leave you with a beautiful time-lapse I'm just filming it here with my little GoPro and um, in the distance in the very very far distance this is how good the visibility this time of year is I've just used my phone and you, you know that blue thingy that comes up and biting me. Oh, that one stings after. Okay, so that was probably poison. Great, brilliant. Um, you, you know when you use the phone and you see which direction your phone's facing, so I faced it towards those mountains, and those are the mountains of Utai Thani, and um, that is tomorrow's province. I'll be waking up early, and we'll be going there. So the next video is that province, and um, it's all the way over there, and it's gonna take a couple of hours. It's 130 kilometers to those mountains, and yet they just look down the road because of visibility and this light is just so perfect. This time of year, what is it, September? It's coming towards the end of the rains. Um, all of the fields are lush green and the rice and the sugar cane are growing in, in this luscious sunlight as well. But soon, come November, it will be dry, it won't rain and they'll harvest in November, December and then January, February it starts to get a little bit smoky and really, really hot. So this is the perfect time of year to be in central Thailand. So there's no need to rush through and get to Chiang Mai. Let's take our time. I've decided just to slow things down. There is 11 provinces between here and Chiang Mai and I haven't had the email or the text message yet because um, I need to go to Chiang Mai for a vaccine but I'm still sort of not really, it's not my time yet but I'm hoping it will be soon. So instead of just going all the way to Chiang Mai quickly, and then realizing I have to wait a couple of weeks, let's just do these provinces now. We're in the area, we're in central Thailand. There is 11 provinces to do, so let's do them. If they're as good as Chia Nat, then we're in for a great, great, great time. <sighs> Thanks for watching. See you in the next adventure.